The greatest comic character of American comic books has been its first superhero. Clark Kent, Superman, AKA the Man of Steel, has been in print continuously since his debut in 1938, and due to his popularity, he got his own book, Superman, in 1939. Since then, he's gone through a lot of changes. He had serials for movies, he's been in cartoon shows, he's been in movie theaters with various actors. Even to today, Superman remains an easily identifiable and iconic character. So what's gone on with the comics? Why have things gone so wrong in the last few decades? Well, in my opinion, there are two main reasons. The first main reason is a lack of stewardship. When someone creates a character, puts their heart and soul into a product, they really want the best for that character and for the future. Superman in and of himself is very much a modern day Hercules or any other hero of legend. Those stories live on and on. The problem is when people want to make quote unquote modern takes on it. We are now so far from the character that Siegel and Schuster created that there's nobody really invested in the Man of Steel himself. He's just become an empty corporate property. And the biggest problem with this is the writing. No one has their eye on the prize. When Dan DiDio was at DC, I guess there was a little bit of it. Jim Lee hasn't seemed to make any changes, but we end up with stories like 2021's Superman Red and Blue, where Superman gets prison raped over the course of eight months and forced to look somebody in the eyes while he's getting it in the rear. Who wants to read that? Why would you ever allow that kind of story to be written? If you ask people across the world, what does Superman stand for? The answer is truth, justice in the American way. Recently, he hasn't really stood much for any of those things. Right now, his comic is full of, well, a lot of degenerate sexual storylines, which I know is very popular, at least in the mainstream comics, but they probably go a long way to the reason of why modern comics are doing just so bad. And again, we come down to a lack of editors or any sort of stewardship in these stories. The most important reason is a lack of understanding of who exactly Superman is. Superman is Clark Kent. He was born, well, on Krypton, of course, but he was raised in Ohio, Cornfield Territory, Ohio. Now, technically Metropolis is not in Ohio, as far as we know, but Siegel and Schuster were when they wrote him. And Metropolis? Well, Cleveland was the fifth largest city in the U.S. at the time. It was a bustling metropolis full of manufacturing and jobs and contained some of the wealthiest people in the world. So what we're talking about is a Midwesterner. This becomes a problem because frankly, nobody from the Midwest seems to be writing Superman stories anymore. Or at least the people who do have never been to the Midwest and don't understand Midwesterners in Midwestern mentality. We see problems with this in quote unquote the alien and the nice guy. First of all, how in the heck does everybody know Superman's an alien? Why would he tell people this? If you were from Ohio, especially at that time, you would not have pointed out your otherness. In fact, Clark Kent wanted to fit in. Now, yes, this story has been retconned and retold over time, but nobody knew he was a Superman in the first few issues. There, there were no news stories of a man who could lift cars living in nearby Smallsville. Nobody knew who Clark was. His parents died. He went to the big city to work as a news reporter. At that time in Ohio, there was all sorts of worldwide immigration leading to people farming in Ohio. You had a wide variety of people, all the way from people who were in the U.S. at its founding, AKA Amish families, all the way to a lot of Eastern European immigrants who were trying to escape a certain German political party that was raging its way through Europe. These people weren't ashamed of where they came from and who they were, but they all wanted to be American. They all wanted to be equal in this new country and to live their lives as they see proper. That is the value that Clark Kent would have. 
He wouldn't go around pointing out that he's an alien from another planet. Even if that made sense on a tactical level, why would he? It might bring up the whole kryptonite thing. And the more offensive part of this is the nice guy. We see endless stories about how nice Clark Kent is. He goes around Metropolis looking for kittens in trees and stopping bank robberies and whatnot. No, that's not how Superman was. Go back to Superman issue one. For the most part, he only goes and stops crimes when his editor, Perry White, sends him on reporting missions to see exactly what's going on. He's not out there looking. He's not gonna turn the other way and not help someone, but he is a guy who wants to be with Lois Lane. He wants to become this news reporter, and he wants to make a difference in that way. Not necessarily by stopping bullets and punching out bad guys. And this is a problem that a lot of people from the Midwest don't understand. The difference between a nice guy and a good guy. A nice guy will go around doing quote unquote nice things for other people as sort of an unwritten contract that eventually those people are gonna do for him. And they tend to be sex perverts in the real world. A good guy on the other hand is going to do what he is obligated to do. This is something you learn in the Midwest. Now, what do I mean by that? I got two old biddies in their mid eighties who live next door to me. They don't have kids or grandkids visiting very much. When it snows and their driveway is full of snow, when I do mine, I do theirs. Because they pay me? No. Because I particularly like them? Eh, they're okay. But it's because they're two old ladies who are in their 80s. I am obligated to help people when I am the one who can do that. If you grew up on a farm and you see part of your neighbor's fence is broken and you can easily put the fencing back up, you do that. And then you go home and you call your neighbor and be like, hey, I just fixed your fence over at such and such location. Clark Kent does things as Superman because he feels an obligation. Why does he feel that obligation? Because he knows bullets won't hurt him. Because he knows in many occasions, he is the only one who can stop crime and do things that make a difference. Unfortunately, this leads to a lot of misconceptions even with American authors who were from, let's say, New York, Portland, Los Angeles. But it's especially bad when it comes from foreigners. Case in point, Grant Morrison's All-Star Superman. There's a scene where Superman's sitting there saying, Lois doesn't understand me. Well, if you understand where that came from, the Grant Morrison told a story where he was coming out of Comic-Con San Diego and there was a guy dressed as Superman he invites the guy to go get a drink, and the guy starts talking about how Lois doesn't understand him. Well, that's California Nancy Mamby Pamby talk. I know, I lived there for 12 years, and everybody's all about going to talk to your therapist and how nobody likes you, and oh, it's so gosh darn hard. Where in the Midwest, people just get on with their lives. Clark Kent would do his best to get with Lois, would work hard to tell those stories. He would go out on weekends to tailgate outside of Adam's games. And I don't know, he might go to a quiz night at the pub. He's not out there, quote unquote, looking for crime. If he comes across crime and it seems like the cops can't handle it, then yeah, he's gonna do something about it. But otherwise, he's on with bigger problems. He's gonna use his sleuthing skills to cover political corruption, to cover corporate corruption, in the first issue, he stops a war between South American countries that are being propped up by the military industrial complex. That's who Superman is. Now he was neutered as he was seen as maybe too communist after World War II, but let's bring him back. We could use a little bit more of that guy. Now the reason I made this video is recently there's been a lot of talk about Superman going into public domain. I think it's about eight or nine more years from the recording of this video. But the question is, what's gonna keep all these news stories from sucking? What's gonna make them have a great take on Superman that makes you happy to read comics again? I've got a story in my pocket and hopefully in nine years, it'll be ready to go. So if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, I'll have more content. Hopefully better reviews, a little happier reviews of modern books, but 
What do you think? What's the biggest problem with Superman in 2024?